Hi everyone! In our last video we walked through a Monte Carlo method to estimate the value of pi. We did this by writing and optimizing an R program that simulates a game of darts. You can find a link to that video on the right. In this video we will see that this approach is actually part of a much broader class of methods called Monte Carlo integration. Using Monte Carlo integration we can estimate single or multiple definite integrals, which allows us to easily simulate areas or volumes. And along the way we will also check out some approaches to define and plot functions in R. We use R because it allows us to implement the methods and generate all these plots with just a few lines of code. So, what is Monte Carlo integration? Imagine you have a function defined on the interval from A to B. You want to find the area under this curve, which means that you are looking to compute a definite integral. One Monte Carlo way to solve this definite integral is to first uniformly sample many random points, and then compute the value of the function at each point. In this example, we randomly sample four points, x1 through x4. We then estimate the definite integral simply as the length of the line from A to B, times the average value of the function at the four points. So, right now you might be wondering why this formula even works. Let's start by rearranging the terms a bit. We can rewrite our equation as follows. Now we see that the formula is actually breaking up the interval into four rectangles of equal width. The heights of these rectangles correspond to the values of the function at the four points we have chosen. So we are just summing up the area of these four rectangles to estimate the area under our function. This approach is not perfect. For example, we know that the function dips between x2 and x3, but this is not captured by our sum. To overcome this challenge, we can just increase the number of random points, from 4 to potentially a few thousand. The more points we choose, the better our estimate of the integral will generally be. And that's it for Monte Carlo integration. This example focused on a one-parameter function, but this approach extends into multiple dimensions as well. Our function can, for example, be defined on a 2D surface instead of a line, and the approach will work exactly the same. Many approaches, such as importance sampling, have also been designed to further improve our estimates. For now, let's implement this basic Monte Carlo integration method for a few functions in R. To start, let's define the simple function x squared. For this example, we will focus on the region between minus 3 and 3. We can plot this function in R using the curve command. And then we can shade the area we wish to compute, and also add a background grid to our plot. Notice that we first had to load a package in order to gain access to the shade function. If this package is not yet present on your machine, you can easily set it up using R's built-in package installer. For now, this is just a simple example of what R offers in terms of graphing functionality. In a few minutes, we will see that R can also generate interactive 3D plots that you can move around and resize with your mouse. Now, from basic calculus, we know that the shaded area equals 18. Let's estimate this area using Monte Carlo integration, which we will implement in two steps. First, we sample 2000 random points uniformly between minus 3 and 3. Then, in a single line of R code, we apply our function to the random points compute the corresponding mean, and finally multiply this value by the length of the interval from minus 3 to 3, which is 6. This is our first Monte Carlo estimate of the integral, and it is relatively close to the true value of 18. Let's see how the number of random points we sampled affects the accuracy of our estimate. To do this, we repeat the exact same estimation process with different numbers of points starting with an estimate based on just one point and ending at an estimate that uses 10,000 points. In this plot, the horizontal axis represents the number of random points used in a given simulation, and the vertical axis shows the corresponding estimate. We see that the accuracy of our estimate improves as we add more points, and finally stabilizes around the correct value of 18, which is marked by the horizontal red line. So far, everything looks great. Now, let's see how this approach works in three dimensions. We define a two-variable function that just returns the sum of the squared inputs. And let's look at two ways to visualize this function. Again, we are interested in values between minus 3 and 3 for both x and y. This code assigns to x and y a hundred values that increase in constant increments to start at minus 3 and end at 3. 
We now apply our function to all combinations of x and y values, and finally plot this grid of results. This graph uses R's built-in plotting functionality and generates a static picture of our function. External packages have been developed over time to add even more powerful functionality. Let's use one of these packages to generate an interactive plot. We can now move this plot around and get a better view of our function. Our goal is to estimate the volume under this surface. From basic calculus we know that this volume equals 216. Again we select uniform random points across the region, but this time we do it for both variables x and y. Finally, we perform the Monte Carlo integration in one line by first applying our function to the random points we selected, then taking the mean of these values, and finally multiplying the result by the area of the surface over which we want to compute the volume. This result is fairly close to 216, which is the true value of the integral. The number of random points we sampled affects the accuracy of our estimate. So let's repeat the process, again starting with an estimate based on just one point and ending with an estimate that uses 10,000 points. As in the previous example, we see that the accuracy of our integral estimate improves as we add more points and finally stabilizes around the true value of 216. Now, at the beginning of this video, I mentioned that Monte Carlo integration can be used to estimate pi. To accomplish this, we just need to define an appropriate function. Take for example the following definition. The value of this function is 0, except when both x and y are within a circle of radius 1 centered at the origin. In that case, the return value is 1. Let's define the function on x and y values between minus 1 and 1. Under our current definition, the function works great if both x and y are individual numbers, but will not work as intended when x or y are vectors of numbers. To be able to query h with vector inputs, we use the handy vectorize function in R. Now h works correctly under both settings. h is a two-parameter function, so we can easily graph it in R. And we can move this plot around to get a better view. A simple geometric argument shows that the volume under this function equals pi. This is true since we are looking at a cylinder with a base surface area of pi and a height of 1. Let's repeat our usual workflow by first uniformly sampling random points between minus 1 and 1. And then computing the Monte Carlo estimate of the volume. So far a decent guess at the true value of pi. Let's check the accuracy as we sample more points. As usual, the red horizontal line marks our target value, in this case pi, and we see that sampling more points helps stabilize our estimate around this target. And that's about it for today. Thanks for watching this quick overview of Monte Carlo integration in R, and see you in the next video.